Are you a little concerned about your money? How about inflation? Or maybe the move toward a cashless society or digital identity? Now, to talk about some of these concerns many Canadians share is Brett Olin, CEO of Bow Valley Credit Union here in Alberta. Brett joins us now from Canmore. And Brett, welcome to Bridge City News. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You bet. Now, for our viewers that don't know, what are some of the fundamental differences between a credit union versus a traditional bank? Sure, there's, there's a lot of differences. Uh, some of the main differences are that we're member-owned versus shareholder-owned, uh, and, and that can make a big difference considering that a lot of banks in Canada are owned by foreign foreign parties. Um, it also includes uh, the fact that we uh, vote, uh, our shareholders vote for bylaws and policies and procedures and the board of directors of our organization. And so they've, they've definitely got the better interest of, of local communities and, and Albertans in mind, uh, as well as we're regulated differently from uh, the bigger banks. Uh, we're regulated by organization called CUDGE, the Credit Union Deposit Guarantee Corporation, where the bigger banks are regulated by OSFI, the Office of Superintendent of Financial Institutions, uh, who report directly to the Minister of Finance of Canada, Christina Freeland. So uh, those are some of the key differences. Um, our, our staff are also very locally based. You're not sending decisions off to Toronto uh, or other parts of the world for, for decisions uh, that, that are made on lending and other decisions. Uh, that are part of a credit union. So. so, Brett, let me ask you something. Were you approached by Ottawa to freeze bank accounts of those who participated in the Freedom Convoy back in 2022? Well, what was really interesting about that is that, no, we were not approached by, by anybody from Ottawa. You know, we we you know, knew about it in the news and things like that, but we never received one phone call, one email, uh, any letters, and what was really surprising to us is that arbitrarily ATB and some of the other bigger banks just started freezing people's accounts, which was just staggering to us because we were one of the first ones to stick up our hand and say, this is a fundamental freedom of people's, and this is not right of, of what you're doing. And so it, it really came as a big surprise to me that these other financial institutions just sort of bent over backwards um, for something that in my mind, they didn't even receive any correspondence about. Now, Bow Valley Credit Union is a strong proponent of gold-backed banking. What exactly is gold-backed banking, and why do you feel it's so important, Brett? Sure. Uh, it's, uh, this, this process started about uh, three years ago, and, and it just uh, been nagging on me from about 2008 of how much money printing, basically, currency printing was happening in society. Um, there's various reasons why there wasn't inflation happening back in 2008, but we saw it in spades in the last couple of years. And so we wanted to be able to protect both our, our members and our organization against what we see as, as going to be a very inflationary decade going forward. And so it's it's a bit of a misnomer that, that it, we're called gold back. We're not quite in the traditional sense, gold back dollar for dollar um, with precious metals. But we do use the profits of our organization to uh, purchase precious metals, mainly gold and silver, um, to protect our, our organization and our members against what we see is going to be an inflationary decade. We also have other products that, that we provide within our organization to help people personally, um, such as gold and silver sales, um, at a wholesale level, storage, uh, we're working on gold collateral lending, where you can actually lend against your precious metals, um, as well as deposits that, that uh, uh, get a kicker, an equity kicker, if, if the price of uh, precious metals goes up. And so uh, these are just some of the products we're working on. We're working on many others, um, but we feel that we need to be able to help people and our members um, get away from this constant nagging inflation that we think is going to just per perpetuate um, going forward and, and uh, for, for what we see as the foreseeable future. Yeah, and we'll talk about inflation a little bit more later in the interview here. So, Brett, what is the concept behind gold-backed banking? How does it differ compared to the traditional fiat currency system? Well, it's it's really just a safety feature in, in our minds and, and being able to protect um, your cash savings against what what we see as that inevitable inflation. And so, you know, 
it's interesting enough, my, my older son was just talking about this today. I was like, what is one of the most safest investments? And mainly what comes to mind to people is, is cash or, or GICs and that type of thing. But in general, people forget about that uh, your purchasing power is constantly being eroded um, if there's inflation running in the background. So if, if you deposit $100 today, in 10 years, that uh, deposit is going to be worth a whole lot less for buy, buying uh, products and services in 10 years' time just because of that inflation. So basically what, what happens is that product uh, may have been safe in the past. But now, with, with this nagging inflation, um, all of a sudden, that, that safe haven of, of assets disappears. Now, you've been a little skeptic when it comes to central bank digital currencies, Brett. Why don't you explain to our viewers exactly what they are and why you think we should maybe be a little leery? Sure. So central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, um, my inherent issue with, with the CBDC is that it, it adds a whole other level to money um, and, a, and a control factor around it. So if, if you think of uh, an asset of yours, so say you have that same $100 cash again, you deposit it to a financial institution like an RBC or a Bow Valley Credit Union. It's, it's an asset to you and it's a liability to the actual financial institution. Now, with the central bank digital currency, it, it basically wipes out the middleman. So no longer dealing with Bow Valley Credit Union or RBC, you're dealing directly with the central bank of a particular government. And so um, as being a little leery, um, there, there are a good reason for that intermediary commercial bank, a Bow Valley Credit Union. Or other financial institutions, and the main reason is, is so governments can't basically just frivolously spend their money uh, or your money and, and basically erode it in the future. And so, banking's been around for thousands of years, and there is a good reason that there is a distinct separation between the central bank and your financial institution, and that's it. And so, the the governments just basically can't go haywire and print all those digital dollars or, or actual paper for currency at a whim. And, and what that does is basically rockets inflation to the moon and, and erodes your buying power. So it's, it's, a, it's a really mischievous and, and devious way to basically tax people. And that's, that's the way I think people should think about it, is inflation is a tax that the government is spending money to society. And it's, you don't need voters to agree to a tax, this type of tax. Um, you can basically do it behind the scenes. It, it happens generally at a slower pace, so you don't notice it as much. Uh, but, but make no mistake, it is a tax against people with savings. Now, do you believe that governments are actually moving away from cash? And if so, why? Well, it, it's, it's really interesting. Um, the, the pandemic gave us a, a lot of insights. And, and one of those things, if you remember, was that they discouraged the use of cash. Oh, you don't want to get into that cash. It's dirty and it could carry those germs and viruses and things like that. But interestingly enough, cash use actually went up during the, the COVID pandemic. But I think it's exactly what I was talking about earlier is that you can basically tax people's savings without them knowing about it, and they have zero control over direction that the government's going to spend. So I think that's why, effectively, they want to go into a cashless society or CBDCs. Um, and think of uh, a CBDC as, as programmable money as well. So if you spend too much time at a gas station or too much at the butcher shop or uh, too much on something that's uh, not politically acceptable or something like that, then effectively with the central bank digital currency, they can turn off your bank account um, and, and they won't need an institution like ours as an intermediary to, to get in the way and stick up our hand and basically say, this is not right. So you really believe that maybe the digital currencies could be leveraged by governments and maybe lead to less freedoms for Canadians? Absolutely. I think that's that's the direction that it's headed. Um, and interestingly enough, um, the Central Bank of Canada did a survey in the spring of 2023, 
And uh, we were not a proponent of the central bank digital currencies, and we wrote a small paper on why we disagreed with it. And this survey uh, got about 90,000 responses, and they were overwhelmingly bad um, towards not wanting central bank digital currency. And so the Central Bank of Canada basically had to reposition it. And, and it doesn't mean that they're not going to try again. But the thing is, I think they heard loud and clear from Canadians, they don't want this, but that doesn't go along with their agenda. And now, further to that, the, the country of Nigeria um, did implement a central bank digital currency, and it had absolutely horrendous uptake because the government or the people knew what the government was up to. And so it only had about a 0.5% adoption rate. And it, it f- failed miserably because the people knew that basically what they were trying to do is, is steal the savings of the people. So they had to back away with it from it. Especially that Nigerian prince with all of that cash, you know, they keep wanting to give it, right? <laughs> That's right. Hey, Brett, do you think the digital currency kind of goes hand in hand with the new digital IDs that are being rolled out? Yeah, I think that's, that's definitely part of it. Um, our organization is not a proponent of central bank digital currencies or the digital ID. I think your, your plastic ID just works fine. Um, but it, absolutely. And it, and it just seems to be that anything that they say um, that is going to increase your safety and security, I think you need to be wary of. Um, and, and that's always sort of how they seem to be pushing these things is like, oh, we're trying to avoid this. We have to increase your safety. We have to increase your security. But I think it's important to note with that increase in safety and security, you're, you're sacrificing your liberties. Now, looking at the oil backed dollar, what potential economic and geopolitical implications could arise from maybe shifts away from West Texas Intermediate as a backing of our dollar? Well, and I think it's already happened. Um, this this month is actually fairly interesting because uh, Saudi Arabia um, joins uh, the, the BRICS nations next month. And so Saudi Arabia is, is a considerable provider of oil and gas, as you know, and it's second only to the United States. Um, and so they have considerable um, margin, um, on the margin, purchasing power of, of the oil and gas. So they, they can significantly swing things. And what is really interesting, and it's happened over the last couple of years, the BRICS nations have become very close with Saudi Arabia. Um, China has become very close to Saudi Arabia. And the US, um, at best, gets a fist bump with Biden. Um, so there, there is some challenges um, that, that you see the cracks that are coming away from that world reserve currency of, of the U.S. dollar being backed by that oil. Um, and uh, I, I think we have to be very careful politically um, going forward because it could really upend the apple cart um, if, if that backing disappears completely from the U.S. dollar and, and moves more towards uh, the Asian economy. So. Brett, inflation is finally back down to around 3%. And Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem is considering interest rate cuts in the new year. How significant will that be for borrowers? Well, I, I think it's important for the, the uh, consumer that, that uh, a lot of people got in with, with both feet into a mortgage they effectively can't afford at, at these rates. But I think it's important to remember inflation comes in waves. And, and this is just wave one. Um, I think that we need to be very concerned that there's, there's future waves. Um, and, and part of the challenge is, and, and why the Bank of Canada has ba- had to back away from these rates, and so as, as the U.S. is, we're, we're in a position, uh, in my p- uh, opinion, called fiscal dominance. And, and basically what that means is we've printed so much currency and we're in so much debt that you actually have to print more to pay the interest on that debt. And so it's important to note that no longer do our tax revenues actually pay for this debt because the interest is so high. We actually have to print more money to get into this position of actually paying off our debt. And so that in is inherently inflationary. And so, so now you've moved inflation from the consumer to the government. And so I don't think this inflation is going to go away as easily as the government of Canada thinks. I think we're just in wave one and it's going to continue to, to uh, be perpetual for, for the next decade or so. 
So, Brett, in your opinion, how do we fight against deflation in today's economy? Well, I, I think that's exactly what we're trying to do as an organization. Is is we've, uh, the, there's there's a few tools, and it's getting into hard assets. And we, as a financial institution, have known precious metals, gold and silver, as money for thousands of years. And it's pretty interesting that gold and silver rises regardless of how much um, currency that that the governments print. So they basically buy the same amount of goods and services that they did thousands of years ago that they do today. Um, so I think that inherently is a very good hedge for financial institutions. And I encourage people to take a look at gold and silver personally um, to, to manage this inflation, what I think is going to happen going forward. Now, that being said, don't get ahead of yourselves. Don't put every red cent into precious metals. That's not what I'm advocating. But a little will go a long way. Think of it more as an insurance policy on, on that regards. Um, I think it's important to hold on to hard assets, land, your house. Um, and, and part of the challenge is it's becoming more difficult to be able to do that. Brett Olin is the CEO of the Bull Valley Credit Union here in Alberta. Brett, thanks so much for joining us today from beautiful Canmore. Thanks for your time. On behalf of all of us here at Bridge City News, I'm Hal Roberts. God bless and thanks for watching.